Wow, thanks everyone for coming on so early on day three. Uh, I got two and a half hours of sleep myself, so I'm totally ready to go. And um, uh, yeah, the, you know, the design patterns I think are super important for you know, why we're even all here. The movement's been going on for a while, but the hackerspace design patterns really did change things dramatically and got so many people aware of this incredible opportunity, uh, hackerspaces and all of our hacker conferences like here. So um, I have a lot of information that I've compiled and I can't really go over much of it, so I want to really just put everything in context of why the hackerspace, original hackerspace design patterns are so important and some ideas of how to compile um, a new set that includes the original, because the original really are superb. They, they are still relevant and vital. So um, I have to look at my notes, I'm afraid, because my brain's a little broken, so forgive me. But um, you know, I, I've been waiting for this camp for four years, <laughs> since the last camp. And it's, <laughs> it's just, it's just so amazing here, you know. I, 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 I've been thinking about this talk for a long time, but I actually wrote it last night at the Nope Village. Uh, that's our noise bridge and pseudo room of San Francisco area hackerspace village. And most of the camp, I've either been doing workshops or wandering around and meeting amazing people, but if you just sit there, it's incredible the kind of people that just come up to you. Uh, I wasn't really prepared for that because I was supposed to write my talk, but, um, you know, like, a friend comes by who's now a, an employee of the Pirate Party and starts talking about copyright issues. And there's an acquaintance who comes by who uh, I've met a number of years ago who's now been spending the last year of his life writing a really trippy, cool uh, game you can play on your phone. Someone else comes over and talks about, and we talk about, you know, encoding and decoding transmissions, receptions with uh, an incredible radio badge. How about that badge? Um, and then funding sources for our projects and how they matter, uh, how to promote open science, secure password managers, filmmaking. I mean, and there, these are just a, a few of the things that we talked about, which kept me up till 5.30 in the morning. And of course, that meant we were all talking about the merits of sleep. So anyways, this is our community. And, um, you know, my first hacker conference was in 2006. That's getting to be a number of years now. Um, you know, the, the turning point for me, though, is the following year at CCC camp. You know, where we are now. Just amazing. More LEDs than China. Uh, but, you know, this community comes together and creates this. It's, it's just totally amazing. You know, in 2007, though, there were a bunch of North Americans who came to camp, camp 2007, and we were visiting some hackerspaces. We really wanted to learn about hackerspaces because all of us have experienced how wonderful it is to be in an amazing community at hacker conferences, but we really didn't have hackerspaces to go to and check out in North America. So we met a, a bunch of German hackers at hackerspaces, three of whom from uh, C4 in Cologne, um, they agreed to put together a presentation for not only us, but everyone to learn from, and they researched what worked well and also what didn't work well at all the hacker spaces they could uh, talk to people at. Um, and then most of them were in Germany, of course, including a lot of information from CCC in uh, Cologne. So um, they presented it at 24C3, it was called Building a Hackerspace, but it was presented as patterns. They called it the Hackerspace Design Patterns. And within several months of this talk, we had several hackerspaces in North America, including Noisebridge, the one I co-founded. And within a year later after that, with new examples, plus all the German ones and these patterns to draw from, there were over 100 a year later. 
We had the idea、uh, driven by someone from Meta Lab in Vienna to create Hackerspaces.org, a networking place where people from Hackerspaces and people thinking of starting Hackerspaces and running Hackerspaces could all help each other, could all network, and people could list themselves. It's a wiki, and within not all that many years, we have over 2,000 Hackerspaces listed on Hackerspaces.org, which is. Also directly a result of the original hackerspace design patterns. <clears throat> My first hacker conference was in New York, Hope Six, which I'm now helping.、Uh, Hope Conference is helping organize because I, I just fell in love with all of this.、Um, but back then, I'd never heard of hackerspaces. Before I, I, I heard about Hope, I never even heard of hacker conferences. I had no idea. What to expect? I was kind of nervous. I was going to give a talk, and you know, I'm an introverted geek. And what what do you expect to go to this large group full of people you don't know and giving a talk, and they're all staring at you, and you're on the stage? But it turned out to be 2,000 introverted geeks. It was incredibly cool, and I felt wonderful and safe and fantastic in a group of people for the first time in my life. And it's because of the community. That they formed, that we form. It really is what we're creating—a wonderful community of geeks. So one of the focuses for me, it really is community. It really is very important for us, for all of us, geeks or not. We all need community in our lives. You know, that's why we're here, rather than just at home on the internet, right? So, as a species, we no longer need. Community to survive as we once did long ago, but we still need community to feel like our lives are important, to feel like we're part of something bigger than ourselves. And with hackerspaces, even with all the cool blinky lights and projects and tools, it's the community that brings people together, rather than just sitting at home alone, typing on your keyboard or holding a soldering iron or a sewing machine. But you know, as it turns out. Not necessarily all well suited for community because we're not so well trained. So community is hard work. Maybe it always has been. The, the hackerspace design patterns are a fantastic set of patterns that we can look at and ponder and draw from to help us in our journeys with interfacing with community and forming community and hopefully growing community. And even though they were written eight years ago. And there were only a small number of hackerspaces back then. They really are still very relevant. If you haven't read them, please do. Just look up hackerspace design patterns online. You'll find them. They're pretty amazing.、Uh, they're very important. And if you have read them, reread them. I was actually surprised rereading them, preparing for this talk over the last three weeks. How? Relevant they are, how interesting and、um, uh, insightful they are. So I don't have time to go for over obviously the whole original design patterns, but I want to give you a few of them so you get a feel for how the design patterns work and have a, a, a taste of it. This is just one I thought was pretty interesting.、Uh, you know, how do you start? You know, do you start with this or do you start with that? Do you start with a building and hope people come? Do you just have a cool project and then grow it into a, a community that you then find a space? They recommended what、um, I've seen at the hackerspaces I've visited. And by the way,、I've, I travel the world giving talks and workshops, usually with soldering、uh, for the workshops and teaching people of all ages this cool stuff, doing what I love and doing it mostly at hackerspaces. But in all the hackerspaces I've visited. Most of them have started by working on the infrastructure, creating just enough organization and infrastructure, walls, spaces, whatever, some tools that people could come together and grow their community in whatever surprising ways their community would grow. This other one I thought is pretty interesting, named after Grace Hopper. She's one of the early computer programmers.、Um, she was. Worked her way up in World War II.、Um, when do you start a hackerspace? 
there's always problems that you need to solve before you can really do the thing, before you can start any project, right? If you're doing art, if you're doing a computer program, how much do you architect before you actually start? The recommendation of the hackerspace design patterns and what has worked really well for so many hackerspaces around the world is you just do it. Don't wait. If you try to solve all the problems before they happen, you'll never start. So this has led to a couple of things that I've seen at not only Noisebridge, but hackerspaces around the world. Uh, one of the outgrowths of this is, you know, so, well, there's a couple of rules of thumb. So one of them is don't solve problems that haven't happened. You just get bogged down in endless, useless discussions. And what I've seen at, at Noisebridge and other hackerspaces is when that starts happening, someone just says, let's not solve problems before they happen. And then, oh, it's like, oh, yeah, and then we move on. Another one is duocracy. Have you all heard of duocracy? Yeah? So duocracy is uh, just do it. Don't ask permission. Grace uh, Hopper is famous for a number of quotes. One of them is, it's better to um, uh, ask for forgiveness rather than permission. So just do it. But of course, follow the one rule of noise bridge and signs we've seen all over here. Be excellent to each other as you do it. If you think there are objections, obviously, you don't want to go ahead. Another one that I think is great, um, well, there was, there was one called the plenum pattern, which talked about the importance of weekly meetings. And that's the way people come together and um, discuss issues of importance and make decisions and solve problems. The pattern that followed this is, well, what day of the week do you choose for this meeting? And I like the first line, every weekday sucks. And it's true. If we're starting an organization, a community, a hackerspace, we're busy. We have stuff happening in our lives, cool things happening in our lives, and we're busy. There's no way you're going to pick a day of the week that works for everyone. So just pick Tuesday and get it over with. And that's what we did. At Noisebridge, we did this. and. We grew rather quickly before we had a space to so up to 50 people every Tuesday meeting. But it was very problematic because some people had to get off uh, early because they had Chinese lessons online with someone in China and other people couldn't come till late and various other reasons why it's problematic, like every day of the week is. So we decided to focus for three weeks on how to choose the best day of the week. So we, some people who thought this was important researched it, and everyone in the group picked their number one, number two, and number three best day of the week, and we come up with an algorithm. One person came up with an algorithm and put all the data in, and it came out, and the best day of the week was Tuesday. <clears throat> um, yeah, so why go through the pain? learn from others' experience. Um, you know, there are also anti-patterns in the uh, hackerspace design patterns. This one is really relevant. If you have a space and warm community that's friendly and open and inviting, people are going to come who don't necessarily belong. How do you choose that or not is open for discussion, and it's a really important discussion. But some people will start to abuse the space and using the resources without contributing in significant enough ways. It's a shared resource. We have to be aware of other people. If you sleep in a space, you're not just taking up this area that you're sleeping in. People are very aware, perhaps subconsciously, that you're there, and maybe that person isn't necessarily bathing as well as they could. Um, so it's taking up a lot of psychic space. And at Noisebridge, this is one of the many problems that led up to about a year ago of Noisebridge almost dissolving, is some people who don't belong sleeping in our space. I'm going to talk more about that in a bit. One of the main things with design patterns, rather than saying what you should and shouldn't do, all hackerspaces are different and unique. So it's really not a cookbook to say, follow these simple steps. but um, Patterns, rules of thumb, things to think about, to ponder. This is what's worked well and not well at these other spaces. So what do you want to do at your space? Learn from the experience of others. And if you violate or do it differently than what the patterns show, do so consciously. It's totally OK, but do so consciously. For instance, a long time ago, one of the earlier hacker spaces is Tempi Lab, uh, just outside of Paris in a suburb which was not very 
friendly, kind of high crime, and、um, they decided that、uh, one of the people would live there to have a living presence there, and knowing full well about the patterns, and that worked really well for them.、Uh, also, for instance, here's a pattern that is now sometimes an anti-pattern depending on the space. We need food. It's wonderful to bond together while eating food. At so many of the hackerspaces I've been to around the world, I've had fantastic experiences meeting people and having great conversations over food, great food that everyone could eat. But at Noisebridge and many other spaces, it's definitely an anti-pattern. <clears throat>、uh, we have a grocery store in the first floor of our building. <laughs> There are rats. They migrated to our space because it was a friendlier environment for them.、Uh, it also became a place where a lot of people who weren't really, really part of our community were hanging out in the kitchen, just use the kitchen, and then leaving or hanging out with each other and not really being open to people who are part of the community joining in conversations. And people got kind of uncomfortable, and things got messier and messier.、Uh, just you know. Like that, and、um, rats, roaches. We ended up lit last year choosing to close our kitchen, which saddens me. But I think it was the right choice for us. There's a lot of patterns that are really, really relevant.、Uh, they cover many topics,、uh, including sustainability, funding, conflict resolution, and and others.、Uh, but that gives you a taste of what the patterns are like. You, Give up a problem and some solutions, implementation ideas. Now, with many, many more hacker spaces in the world, way more, and eight more years of collective experience, I think we can add to these patterns、uh, so that other people starting hacker spaces and running hacker spaces can benefit from this.、Um, yeah. So to prepare for this talk, I put the word out. I didn't want to just come up with these patterns myself. I have a lot of experience traveling around and visiting hackerspaces, but I wanted to be collective input from as, many, from as many people as possible. So I put out the word on hackerspace email lists, many of them. I put it out on the hackerspaces.org email list, and I was deluged with a lot of suggestions. Really, really good ones. Some of them are very specific to a particular space. Some of them are sub, like、uh, really good for a subset of hackerspaces. What I wanted to initially do was create、uh, patterns that are good universally, somehow distilling what's universal out of these ideas, and presenting ones that are universal for everywhere in the world hackerspaces. And、uh, I think we can do that. But I also would like to create ones that are good for subsets of hackerspaces, like urban ones, or、uh, like ones in decaying industrial urban areas, or, or whatever. Uh, whatever we do, so I actually though got 81 small type pages of raw notes from people, and I'm still getting. Even today, I got some more ideas. People sending me ideas. So clearly, people are thinking about this. People think it's important. So let's let's bring our ideas together and and make some hackerspace design patterns 2.0. The topics. Range quite broad, many of the ones in the original design patterns, but some new ones too. So we have funding people who are toxic to community, keeping people motivated, group organization, conflict resolution, how to deal with physical stuff that accumulates.、Uh, you know, just so many different important topics. I can't go over all of them now, but I want to point out just a few that I think are interesting. These aren't really all fleshed out yet, but they're really good ideas for、uh, for, for making them real.、Uh, the, the mentor pattern is for bringing new people on, so as they come in, they know what your community is about and what it's not about, and they feel welcomed and they can be a almost from the get-go an integral part of the community and grow together. Um, and maybe that was created because of the mentoring program that started a few years ago at Chaos Congress, and it's been working really well there. This is one we came up with Noisebridge、uh, after we、uh, actually, for the time being, anyways, solved our serious problems. We call it the cultural immune system pattern. So, if、uh, you know your body, a living organism. 
and our, our communities can be considered living organisms. Uh, they take on a life of their own more than the sum of the parts. If we can, like our bodies, deal with invading elements that don't fit well, and um, also attract what is healthy, then we're healthier. The community, it's the same thing. So there's many ways to go about that. With NoiseBridge, one of the main problems is people who don't belong, so we talked about how to define that for ourselves, and we came up with some good uh, guidelines for that. And also, uh, taking off on the mentor one, we have greeters. Uh, everyone who comes in is greeted. The greeter it takes full responsibility for that person, shows them NoiseBridge, how cool it is, what uh, NoiseBridge is and is not about, and empowers them to become part of the community and do what they think is awesome in our space. And uh, the greeter also kicks out people who are tweaking. So, the reboot pattern, this is also from NoiseBridge. Uh, I don't want to like, make this NoiseBridge-centric, but I think these patterns that I'm talking about from NoiseBridge apply universally to all community, whether it's hackerspaces or not. If your operating system isn't working too well, your computer's not working too well, you turn it off and on again, and it solves a lot of problems quite often. So that's what we did with our space. There were people sleeping there, there were people stealing stuff, there were everyone taking no care of the tools, they were mostly all broken. If you wanted to do anything there, you had to clean up for 45 minutes. And it, people drifted away. People who don't belong kept coming, and we, we really seriously, seriously considered giving up. But we had the idea um, of shutting the space down, only allowing people who are fixing the place up to come in. It attracted new people, it attracted old people. Everyone, again, felt part of creating the space that they want to be in. It was super high. And when we reopened, we, made, we had a party. And it was really fun. We had not more LEDs than China, but we had a lot of LEDs and lasers and a lot of cool projects from all sorts of people in the community. And we made sure that the people who are toxic to our community stayed out. And we actually painfully had to kick some people within the community out because they were becoming disruptive. Community really isn't easy, but it's way rewarding and worth the effort we put in. I just want to briefly show what NoiseBridge was like before the reboot. And during the reboot. Kind of night and day, huh? And we invited artists in after we painted all the walls white, and we have a mural of Tesla, and all these other beautiful murals on a wall. And now it's a thriving, really positive community that I'm super excited to see what's happening every time I come home. So, again, that's just a little taste of what I've compiled. Uh, I would love to have this as the beginning of a discussion that we can have a living document, the hackerspace design patterns, that keep, we keep adding to so that our communities are healthy. Um, yeah, so there's great diversity in our hackerspaces uh, and all around the world, yet I really do think we can distill some universal uh, patterns to ponder. And, like I said, ones that are good for subsets. So I'd love to start that conversation at a workshop following this talk for anyone who's interested. I have a slide for that later. The world really does need hackerspaces. We need to create and we need community, and hackerspaces bring this, brings this together and makes it available, these opportunities for everyone. In this room, we probably all have this opportunity, or most of us anyways. Many of us have probably even started hackerspaces. So we have to um, make more, I think. Not every one of us, but if we can help other people who want to start more, then maybe some percentage, ideally, all seven billion people in the world have this opportunity that we have. I don't know what'll happen, but I think it's worth a try to, to, to help let this grow even further. So, this is uh, where the, in just the flyers I put up around about anyone interested coming to NOPE, Norton's obscure foggy embassy, foggy with a PH, and we do have a fog machine like San Francisco. Um, please come if you want to talk about this. 
and if we run out of space, we can go to a bigger one. Also, pretty much related, hackerspaces.org website has been somewhat neglected over the years, and there's things that are obsolete on it. I still think it's a fantastic resource. If we put some energy into it, that can be way better into the future. So I'm having a talk about that at Nope, uh, Norton's Obscure Foggy Embassy, uh, on Sunday at 7 o'clock. So that's all I had to say. If you ever want to contact me at camp, there's the relevant information. If you want to contact me anytime, anywhere, for any reason, that's the relevant information. So um, thanks, everyone, for being here at such an unbearably early time on day three. <laughs>
Right. Well, I guess that's up for grabs too. But I wanted to start it at this workshop discussion, brainstorming session, whatever to call it, at Nope. And uh, clearly, hackerspaces.org is a great repository for hackerspace design patterns up till now, and I think it can be far into the future. And if there's a few people who can be motivated to get together, myself included, to revitalize hackerspaces.org and keep it current and keep it going, uh, that's a fantastic place for these discussions to happen. You know, it's kind of embarrassing the week leading up to camp, the hackerspace, hackerspaces.org email list was down. <laughs> That's not okay. Let's, let's uh, you know, have some people who are on top of things, who have the time and energy and desire to keep that happening, and then hackerspaces.org would be a great place for that too. So, but I, I would love to see this discussion happen at all of our hackerspaces and people who are forming hackerspaces, and maybe hackerspaces.org is the best place to compile that information and have it grow and spread from there. So that's what I've thought of till now. Okay, thank you very much again. Thanks. Um, <laughs>